Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, we're covering how fuel level senders work and how to get this information into your ECU. A fuel level sender is a pretty simple thing, and there's a few basic types. The first is a resistive style. In this case, there's some kind of a float arrangement which is mechanically connected to a rheostat which alters its electrical resistance to ground when the float moves up or down. Then there's the capacitive type. This style determines fuel level by measuring the capacitance between a metal inner and a metal outer tube. The capacitance changes depending on how much of that shaft is immersed in the fluid or the fuel. There are electronics in the cap of the sender which convert that capacitance to resistance to then send that resistance signal into your dash or your engine management system. Then lastly, there's the magnetic field read switch style. So I know that's a mouthful, that's this one. This has got a number of magnetic switches in the shaft which close or open when this float goes past. Really nice way to do it and it's a really simple way to mount up the top here. But regardless of which style of sensor you have, the sensor outputs a resistive signal, so that's something measured in ohms, and the ECU needs to interpret this signal and then convert it to a fuel level display. To do this, there's one more piece of the puzzle, the pull up resistor. That's this tiny little thing. A pull up resistor is a very small electrical component and it's worth a few cents. Its job, so in this case, is to provide a consistent resistance value between the signal wire and a 5 volt supply. Then we wire the fuel level sender into the equation. The fuel level sender's job is to try and pull the signal voltage away from the 5 volt supply towards its ground supply. That's a little bit confusing, I know. See how the pull up resistor is holding the signal at 5 volts by letting a tiny bit of current flow between the signal wire and 5 volts. When we add the fuel level sender, remembering that the fuel level sender provides us with a different resistance to ground, depending on how full the tank is, we now have a fight on our hands. Will the signal voltage stay up high while the resistance to 5 volts is less? Or will the voltage go down because the resistance to ground is less and it's easier for the current to flow through the fuel level sender to ground than it is to the 5 volt supply? Because most fuel level senders output a resistance value of around sort of 0 to 300 ohms, a pull up resistor value of around 240 ohms is a great choice. This will offer the widest range of calibration voltages between 0 volts and 5 volts. If the pull-up resistor value is too high, you'll end up with a really narrow voltage calibration window and the fuel level may jump around or be inaccurate depending on the fuel level position sensor. In any case, don't be too worried about the electrical magic behind a pull-up resistor. Just remember, a fuel level sender requires a 240 ohm pull-up resistor to 5 volts and you'll be fine. If you're watching this video in preparation for wiring a fuel level sender into your Haltech IC7 dash, well you're in luck. Analog input 4 on the IC7 dash has a 240 ohm pull up resistor fitted internally, so you don't need to wire anything. Just wire the signal wire from the fuel level sender directly into analog input 4 and you're ready to go. If you've got an Elite or a Nexus series ECU, you aren't quite that lucky and you will need to wire in a 240 ohm pull up resistor between the fuel level sender wire and the 5 volt supply. Once you've got your wiring sorted and you've fitted your pull up resistor, that is if you're not putting it straight into an IC7 dash, it's the voltage on this signal wire that we need in order to calibrate our fuel level senders 0% and 100% range. Fuel level senders are linear, so if you, don't, you don't need to worry about doing every 10% or anything like that. Simply record the fuel level senders voltage with an empty fit tank, then fill the tank, record that voltage. That's your low voltage and your high voltage reading. But if you want to do a calibration based on volume, so in litres or gallons, and not percentage, in this case, you'd start with an empty tank, then you'd add, say, 10 litres of fuel, record that voltage, then add another 10 litres and record that voltage. Do this until the tank's full. This will give you a good calibration so we know exactly how many litres or gallons of fuel are in the tank. To get this information into the ECU software, you'd go to the main setup, 
Functions, then choose Fuel Level. Select the analog input you're using and go to the Calibration tab. This is where you enter the volume of fuel versus the corresponding voltage. To display 0 as 100%, just change that lower scale to 0 to 100 instead of 0 to say 60 for gallons or litres. To calibrate fuel level in the dash, go to Channels, AVI P4 Sensor Value, Fuel Level, then click Input Calibration. This is where you're going to find the fuel level sensor calibrations, all the defaults that you can click on the one that corresponds to your fuel level sender, push your calibration in, and we're ready to go. Right, well that's enough of the theory, that's enough of the wiring, the pull-up resistors, all that stuff. When we actually get around to doing this, it's not as complicated as I'm making out, so don't be too worried. Take a look at this. This is one that's already wired and set up from our drawings before. I've got our fuel level sender. I know it looks a bit funny because I haven't cut this down yet, and it's got our float. So if I have a look at my software over here, full tank, empty tank, empty tank. Right now at an empty tank, it's reading 2.5 volts. Full tank, it's reading 0 0.65 volts. So like I said before, we go to our fuel level sensor under the main functions page, come into our voltage and I've typed in 0 0.62 and 0 0.48. I've just left a little tiny bit of a buffer on either side because these sensors are certainly not very accurate towards the very bottom and very top of their range. So to avoid it bouncing around from 99 and 100% and 0101, I've just built a little bit of a buffer there into the calibration. So now that I've got that voltage typed into the ECU versus how much volume is in the tank, all the way down the bottom, I'm showing 0.00. .00. If I come up about halfway, give or take, I'm showing about 50 either percent or litres or gallons or whatever you've chosen. If I come all the way up to the top, that slowly gets there and 100%. Got a full tank of fuel. Likewise, if we go over to the IC7 dash, I'll flick my software over here. I've got this fuel level sender set up. I'm just going to grab my signal ground off and I'm going to put a signal ground to one side, the signal to the other side of this sensor. I've got my little alligator clips here for a demonstration. I like this style of float much better than the big rod, only that the big rod can get stuck in the bottom of some tanks. If you've got a whole bunch of in-tank pumps that are floating around, they can sometimes get tangled up within the float. Whereas this one, if you can put something like this in the tank, it's nice and simple. Um, most of them come with a seal gasket at the top, so they're a bit easier to get into most of the tanks in the sort of custom cars. Pretty straightforward here. What I've got displaying on our dash over here is the voltage that's getting into the dash from the sender through the dash's internal 240 ohm pull-up resistor. Then, because of the calibration I've already put into the ICC software, giving us our fuel level on the top. Down the bottom here, it's giving us a banner right now saying low fuel level, and we've got zero displayed in red, so that's all configurable in the software as well. As the fuel level comes up, the fuel level comes up, the banner goes away, the warnings go away, it comes all the way up to the top, and we've got a full tank of fuel. If you're setting up a fuel sender and a fuel level and you don't have a Haltec ECU or you don't have an IC7 dash, don't be too worried, you still can do it. Grab yourself a multimeter, something like this. They don't cost a lot of money. With these two posts here, you can measure the resistance of your sensor. Then you can marry the right sensor to the right fuel level sender or the right fuel level gauge that you've got in your car. Well, thanks for sticking with me till the end. I know that was a little bit of a technical one, but I hope now you know more about fuel level senders so you don't run out of gas. See you next time.